Hello, Mr. and Mrs. Brookings Harbor and all the fishing boats at sea. I'm Cousin Bruce Ellis. And I'm Kat Liddell. And And this this is the Insider Insider Report. Report. So let your ears do the walking as we fill you in on what's going on in the Brookings Harbor area and beyond. beyond. Well, hello, 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 and welcome to this week's show that keeps you in the know. Hiya, Kat. Hi, Bruce. <laughs> your Memorial Weekend go so Oh, far. my gosh. It's been crazy. Um, yeah. You know, I can't go a year without being in the parade, apparently. So I was in the parade. I didn't get to see the pirates because you guys were like 20 stops ahead of us or something well, like yeah, that. You're behind you. Oh, yeah, okay, you all okay. were ahead. Oh, but I, I heard that Chrissy put together a lovely float for you all this year, which is oh, really awesome. We had a pirate ship. Yeah. And we yeah. stood up there with the uh, mask and the uh, uh, sails and had this. Well, yeah, cool. everything, man. Well, the whole thing. off to Chrissy Cooper on yeah, that one. James, yeah. man, put yeah. that thing together on the Good trailer, and we got to float up there and stand there and uh, steer the ship, so to speak. Junior mm-hmm. had a blast because he's dead up there. And did oh, it I too. bet he yeah, did. Yeah, yeah, he had a blast standing up there steering the ship. That's mm-hmm. it right there, yeah. Mm-hmm. What were you guys? Oh, okay, so besides the parade, so uh, I'm on the board with the Wild Rivers Film Festival, right. and um, we've been getting ready for a visit from Jacqueline Emerson, the right. star of the film Art Thief that's that's getting screened at the Redwood Theater. As we're taping this, it's Monday. It's getting taped tonight, so by the time that listeners hear it, it's going to be over. It'll be a past but, thing. But Jackie came in and did a long form interview with me for the new Wild Rivers Film Radio podcast Very cool. on Sunday. And we went out to dinner and just got to know her. She's a super cool person. Right and the really cool thing about this for listeners today is that she's going to come on for a little interview here as well. Yeah, that's so, it. Yeah, that was our gonna, special surprise. We're going to be talking to her yeah. later today and she'll be talking about the film. And you know what? If you missed the film screening, too bad. But, you know, it's, it's a really good film. And part of the special thing about that is this is a pre-screening. It's also going to screen at the Film Festival in August. In August, so, right? That's yeah. what I heard. Even yeah, if so. you miss the special event, you have an yeah. opportunity to see it at the festival. So, yeah. so you're not. It's not like it gone. You'll never get a chance to see it again. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's yeah. so cool. Because I, I talked to Amanda. Like I said, she goes, "Well, we'll be promoting it for the August one. Mm-hmm. This is just the pre-screen, so it's all good because we're having her on the show the same night. Right. It just just doesn't come out to Wednesday, so this will be all past tense. Yeah, this will be past tense, it's but it's still good, like yeah. learn more about the film. Yeah. It's a good film. Well, yeah. Did you march in in the parade? Oh yeah, we were with Southern Oregon Coast Pride. I do my rainbow. Bright Right, oh, right, wig you, you, thing, I, yeah. I was like, like, you every year. behind us. Yeah, yeah. I, was like, like, I thought we were leading up the, you yeah. know, heading up the tail end of it. Right, so that yeah. Was long. Okay, yeah. Yeah, yeah. There was like more than 50 entries this year. Uh, okay. So, yeah, yeah, it seemed like more than some previous yeah. years, which is nice. That's nice yeah, that it's, yeah. it's Well, we were doing the Lady yeah. Pirates of Captain Bree, yeah. so that was fun, you know. On and I'm point. playing the old pirate, as everybody knows, listens to the show and everything, so... That was great. All the crew was there. It was a good time. It was great. And the day was blast. beautiful. We didn't get rained on or I fogged know, on. Yeah, or yeah our group was like, having fun too. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Just it that was a great day for a parade this year for sure. Yeah, just yeah. that in his own right was fantastic. Yep. And Junior, his first parade. Mm-hmm. So he was digging it. You know, he loved the heck out of it. He was like up there being a captain. He took the helm. Well, maybe <laughs> he'll try out for a play in the future if he liked being in front of a crowd that much. Oh, he's going to be in plays. We're going to be. Do it down the line, we'll do some. I'm just waiting until he gets a little bit older and a little yeah. more mature for it. But he is a little actor. He wants to do it. He's yeah, a little yeah. ham. <laughs> yeah. Well, he likes Good. to follow what Bapa does, too. So it's like, yeah. yeah, he wants to sing. He wants to do the whole nine yards. So oh, there you go. <laughs> Front of the family, I hear. <laughs> no, it'll be fun. That's all right. Yeah. So, anyways, yeah, let's go ahead. We'll get on the show. Up, everybody had a good weekend this weekend. It's still, I mean, a great Memorial Day weekend. Like I said, this will be airing on Wednesday, so it'll be all past tense. But... Man, if everything keeps going the way it did all so far, it was a beautiful Monday as well. So there we go. So, hey, before we get going, I'd like to thank uh, the Oregon South Coast Fishermen, otherwise known as the Castaways, Just the Jeweler, and Oregon Coast VIP Marketing for sponsoring the Insider Report. If you'd like to sponsor our show or one of the other fine shows out there on KCIW, all you got to do is go to KCIW.org and you will be on your merry way. All right, so we're doing a little bit of sliding into a little bit of May and June. So let's start this music schedule off. Yeah. All right. Well, starting at the Elk Valley Casino at their Warriors Bar and Grill on the 31st. And then the 1st of June, Jonathan Foster is going to play. Yep. And then on the 28th, uh, Cisco will be at the Checkdo Activity Center from 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. And over at Inateca in Crescent City, music there starting at 8 p.m. On the 31st, Homegrown is going to be playing. Yep, and then Checo Brewing Company, music starts 6. On the 31st, there'll be John Allen 3. All right, and over at Oxen Free on the 28th, Way Shower is going to play at 8 p.m. Yep, and then Travel Oregon Welcome Center's got some music coming up here in June. On the 1st, they'll have Mark McDonald and Troy Alvarado doing a guitar duo. On the 8th, they'll have John Cannellan doing his ukulele. 
On the 23rd, it'll be Cisco playing his guitar. And then on the 29th, we have Danielle Duran and Nathan Stone, a vocalist and guitar. Like I said, music starts at 2 p.m. down there at the Welcome Center. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then we have a June lineup here for Cisco on the 1st, the 15th, the 22nd, and the 29th. They'll be at the Brookings Harbor Farmer's Market running from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. And then again on the 23rd, they'll be at the Travel Oregon Welcome Center from 2 to 3 and then on the 26th, playing at the Checo Activity Center from 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. Yep, and then we've got summer concerts in Azalea Park. On the 19th, we got Fortunate Gold, a CCR and Neil Young tribute at 6 p.m. That's a Wednesday one, if I remember mm-hmm. right. Yeah, yeah, that's where they started off. And then on the 30th, they got an Afro Blues Grass Band. This is African Blues and Jazz, and this will be the Sunday one at 3 p.m. It sounds fun. All right, and then over at the Elk Valley Casino at the Betty Green Event Center, where music starts at 8 o'clock. On the 8th, they're going to host Skin and Leonard. I guess that's a Leonard Skinner yeah, cover band. Yes, it is. Okay, I figured that one out. All right, okay. Took me a while to say it, too. <laughs> and then on the 15th, they have Seaforth, and on the 29th, comedian Lindsay Glazer. And then over at their Warriors Bar and Grill, on the 7th and the 8th, they're hosting Steve Berg. On the 14th and 15th, Hannah Paysinger. On the 21st and 22nd, Jesse Mead. And on the 28th and 29th, Steve Nelson. Absolutely. All righty. That's it for the music. Uh, If you have a band out there or a musician or whatever, if you want to get your show that you're doing up here on the radio show and possibly in the inside of Southern Oregon Entertainment newspaper, just send the info to CaptainCurry541 at gmail.com, and we will make sure and get it on the air and all the above. There you go. Yes, indeed. All right. Well, let's look at some events happening in the community. So starting things off at the Checo Library in Brookings. Busy again this Busy month. Busy month again. They have some weekly events always going on. So on Tuesdays at 11 a.m., they have story time. That's stories, songs, and simple crafts for young children. And then on Saturdays, starting in June at 2 p.m., they have a creative writing class starting with Blake Allwood. This is a free weekly class on the creative writing process. And then at 4 o'clock on Fridays, they have Hora del Cuento. That's stories, songs, and simple crafts for young children, all led in Spanish. And then for other special events happening, on the 28th of May at 5.30 p.m., They're continuing game nights at Checo Brewing Co. This is an all-ages open game night featuring games from the Checo Library's growing board game collection, and this is hosted by Checo Brewing Co. on Railroad Street. You can try a game from the library or bring one of your favorites to share with friends. This is just a free and fun opportunity to meet and connect with other board game enthusiasts in the community, and game nights have been happening every second and fourth Tuesday of the month. And then there is, on the 30th at 4 p.m., Lego Club, again, May 30th there. Lego builders of all ages are invited to an open building session in the library's youth section. Then on June 1st from 1 to 3 p.m., they're having another seasonal puzzle league. The puzzle league is a seasonal jigsaw puzzling competition with each person or duo participating in a timed race for the fastest person to finish a 300-piece puzzle. All ages are welcome to compete. And then on June 3rd, that's a Monday at 2.30 p.m., they're hosting a book launch. This is a launch of Joyously Free, a book by Joni Lindenmeyer and Elizabeth Atkins. Join bestselling author Joni Lindenmeyer. She celebrates and empowers the journey of LGBTQ plus individuals and the people who love them in a new, unique book called Joyously Free, Stories and Tips for Living Your Truth as LGBTQ plus People, Parents, and Allies. Again, that's by Elizabeth Ann Atkins and Joni Lindenmeyer. And then on the 31st of May at 2 o'clock, they've got a book club coming up. It's Roll for Reading Book Club. And this is a new book club for fans of the fantasy genre. Hey, all library-led programs and events are free to attend, whether or not you live in the area or have a library card. For more information, you can always visit checkolibrary.org, follow them on Facebook, or give them a call at 541-469-7738. Yes, indeed. Hey, lucky seven. Casino is presenting mega trivia, not just your ordinary trivia, it's mega trivia. This is happening on the 31st at 7 p.m. in the Tallowa Event Center. There is a buy-in person, four rounds of 12 questions, raffle prizes, plus food and drink specials. Winning team splits the prize pool, plus they throw a little $100 cash added to each round. First come, first served, because there's limited seating available. 
All right. And now it is time for quotes from famous people with Cousin Bruce. Yes, indeedy. Hey, we've got a few quotes from wrestler actor Dwayne The Rock Johnson. He was born on May 2nd, 1972, young pup. I'm always asked, what's the secret to success? But there are no secrets. Be humble, be hungry, and always be the hardest worker in the room. You know, that applies to a lot of things in life. That's for sure. Mm -hmm. (laughs) It works on everything. Not only do I think being nice and kind is easy, but being kind, in my opinion, is important. He says, I've always seen first responders as unsung heroes and very special people because when everyone else is running away from danger, they run into it. And last but not least, if you know The Rock, can you smell what The Rock is cooking? (laughs) I hope you enjoyed this week's quotes from Dwayne The Rock Johnson with Cousin Bruce. Till next week, have a great one. I couldn't resist. It's his wrestling So, call. <laughs> stone soup? <laughs> yeah, yeah, stone soup. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. That's funny. I dig it. All right. Hey, Brookings Harbor Community Theater is putting on a show. They're currently presenting the epic quest of the damsels in distress. This is happening at the Checo Grange in Harbor. Their show run is going to be the 31st of May through the 9th of June. They have Friday and Saturday performances at 7 p.m. and then a Sunday matinee at 2 p.m., it's hard being a girl, especially in a fairy tale land where everyone expects you to be a damsel in distress. Well, these four young ladies are just not having it. Their story opens with Isadora, who doesn't like seeming helpless after being abandoned in the forest by her father. She much prefers feeling strong and self-sufficient, especially when she pulls an ancient sword from a stone. Isadora soon meets Beatrice, a lady-in-waiting who honestly finds life in the castle quite boring. Winifred joins the spirited pair next, having always lived alone in the forest, concocting potions and practicing spells. The trio is joined by the notorious Masked Maven, a young woman with many secrets. Seeking excitement, the foursome journey on a comical adventure through a fairy tale land of magic and monsters, royal fanfare and fairies, as they prove they can ably find their own way through the world, strong and independent. Along the way, they encounter angry villagers, arrogant princes, mischievous fairies, and hey, even a dragon or two. There's loads of tongue-in-cheek humor, which adds spirit to this fast-paced comedy, with four female leads and a simple single set. This is $15 per ticket for adults, $7 for children. You can get your tickets at Wright's Custom Framing in person, or you can get them online at brownpapertickets.com. For more information about the show, you can always give Tiffany a call at 707 218-4323. Two one eight four three two three. This is indeed, and hey, they got the Southern Oregon Coast Pride in the Park celebration. will be happening on the first, from eleven a.m. to three p.m. Southern Oregon Coast Pride is gearing up for their second annual Brookings Pride Festival throughout June twenty twenty four. The Pride in the Park celebration is on June first this year in Azalea Park, with additional events taking place throughout the remainder of the month. The Pride Planning Committee is made up of local volunteers with an interest in lending their time and talents to the event. If you'd like to join the committee, you can email Laura Ursig at pride at unitedwayswo.org. The festival is seeking your participation. You can sign up to host an activity or information table or a vendor booth for June 1st. They also seek sponsors like you or your group or business to help them make this month of celebration inclusive and fun as possible. Sponsorship levels start at 25 all the way up to 5,000 with great advertisement opportunities at every level. Unable to sponsor financially, but have in-kind goods that could support the success of Pride, well, they're interested in your kind of donations. Whatever your interest, please reach out to Southern Oregon Coast Pride Director Laura at 541-297-0607 or email, as I said, at prideunitedwayswo.org. All right. And coming up next week at Three Penny Theater Co., they're hosting auditions for the play Sylvia. Three Penny Theater Co. is excited to announce auditions for Sylvia by A.R. Gurney. They are seeking three to five adults for a variety of roles in this howlingly funny modern comedy. And auditions are going to happen at the Checo Library in Brookings in their large meeting room. That's at 405 Alder Street. It's going to be happening on June 5th. That's a Wednesday from 5 p.m. to 630. And what is Sylvia about? Greg is a restless, empty nester, tired of his job in finance, looking for meaning in his life. Sylvia is an exuberant labradoodle, a stray in Central Park looking for a new home. When they meet, it is love at first sight. But his wife Kate, a busy rising star in the public school system, is looking forward to some independence now that the kids are gone, and is less than thrilled by the clever and coquettish canine who slobbers, sits on her couch, and distracts Greg from their marriage. Sylvia exerts such a charismatic pull that Kate's friends are appalled, the marriage counselor advocates divorce, 
And even Greg's new dog owner friend warns him of the splintering effect a dog can have on the relationship between husband and wife. It's only when Greg is prepared to make the ultimate sacrifice that Kate is able to see Sylvia not as a threat, but as a new member of her family. A.R. Gurney's Sylvia is a smart, silly, sophisticated, and occasionally salty comedy about relationships, nature, and growing older. If you can't make the in-person audition, and you'd like to audition remotely, you can make arrangements in advance with director Jason Liddell. Please make your arrangements by no later than June 4th. He can be reached on Facebook Messenger by phone at 541-251-0640, or you can send him an email at jasonliddell91 at gmail.com. Yes, right. Hey, in the Checo Pelican Playhouse, 1240 Checo Avenue, is presented the Lady Pirates of Captain Bree. Har <laughs> This is happening on June 7th through June 16th of the weekends. Friday and Saturdays it's at 7.30 p.m. Sundays, it's at 2 p.m. Gangway Pirates of the Caribbean. Here come the Lady Pirates of Captain Bree. When his crew jumps ship upon sighting the pirates in the distance, Captain Jennings is left with a makeshift crew of motley prisoners and Fergus, a sailor who can't swim, to protect his wealthy passengers. The Prescotts, from the inevitable attack as the Lady Pirate take over the defenseless Kayla May, You're in for swashbuckling musical comedy with a host of hysterical characters on deck and spectacular Bill Francois' score, along with Captain Bree, hardy crew of mean and nasty mates, and a couple of new recruits in training who keep forgetting to be rough and tough. You'll find the haughty Professor Bidwell and the pretentious Madame Prescott constantly battling for special treatment and respect. Ha! From the pirates! Samuel Prescott masquerading as a girl to avoid becoming shark bait, and Julie Prescott bursting with a desire to join the Lady Pirates, much to her aunt's dismay. After the pirates send Thomas, the cabin boy, out to sea with a ransom note demanding gold from the British in exchange for the Prescott's lives, they amuse themselves by auctioning off the male prisoners to do their dirty work and showing Julia the ropes of pirating. What is in store when Thomas returns with the British fleet? Set on hanging the pirates for their deeds. Madam Prescott and Bidwell are equally set on seeing Captain Jennings hang for his defenseless approach to the Lady Pirates. Both your cast and your audience will love the swashbuckling ending as the two captains work together to save their crews from the British. Tickets are $15 for adults, $7 for students. And for info on this, you can call 541-469-1857 and say, I get to play the old pirate. Get to do the old welcome aboard song. What I do is my character is cool because I just lead it in. I maybe got two, three minutes. I sing a song and then lead in everything. Get off the stage, go back in the back, watch the rest of the play, and then and come back on at the end and end the thing. And it's beautiful. I love it. I love it. It's it can be quite gratifying to play the chorus. <laughs> it's going to be fun. Yes. It's going to be Yeah, the great chorus telling you what's happening. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Totally, totally. Well, hey, now it's time for a bit of weird history with Bushwhacker Bruce. Right, good day, cat. Good day, mates. Bushwhacker Bruce here, and welcome to this week's bit of weird history for your knowledge pleasure. Did you know that a famous actress, after portraying a nun in a movie, became one? It's true. Here's a story. Dolores Horse burst onto the movie scene at 19 years old in 1957 when she played Elvis Presley's love interest and shared a kiss with him. Well, in the hit Loving You. From there, she established herself as a glamorous leading lady, starring nine more features, including the cult classic Where the Boys Are, and she seemed destined for a long career as a movie star. But in 1960, while portraying St. Clair in the religion-themed film Francis of Assisi, she met Pope John XXIII, and when she told him she was playing Clare in the film, he said, No, you are Clare. This played a role in leading her to her true vocation. So in 1964, the 24-year-old Year old broke off an engagement, left acting behind, and traveled to the Abbey of Regina Lottis Monastery in Connecticut to become a nun. She still lives there today, although she did return to Hollywood to attend the Academy Awards in 2012. That year, God is the Bigger Elvis, a documentary about her life, was nominated for an Academy Award. Well, I call that a divine calling, Hollywood style. <coughs> Hope you enjoyed this week's Bitter in History. With yours truly, Bushwhacker Bruce. Till next time, keep it real, but always keep it weird. Heavenly. <laughs> yeah, so that, that was, and there they are. Lost oh my, my audience for a minute. Where the heck? Where, where did the audience go? <laughs> <laughs> Just take it out for me. 
Hey, Alter Ego is going to be presenting a Boots and Bling Daddy-Daughter dance. This is happening at the VFW Post 1381. That's in Crescent City at 857H Street. That's happening on the 8th of June from 4 to 7 p.m. The annual Daddy-Daughter dance is back, and the theme is Boots and Bling. Admission is 45 bucks for a dad and a daughter and $10 for each additional daughter. And this event is open to the public. Please come dressed in your nicest pair of boots and bling. Girls are invited to bring dads, grandpas, uncles, or other male guests who are special to them. Admission includes a catered dinner, beverages, a photo booth, dancing, a DJ, and much more. And you can get tickets at etix.com. The handle on that is Boots and Bling Daddy Daughter. They have message grams, boutonnieres, and corsages all available for purchase when the event gets a little bit closer. There you go. Well, all right. Well, as we said, we had a special guest in the house. Hey, we got some movie star with us. Awesome. <laughs> I mean, you know, hey, we got to have a first here and it, it, Brookings. And it's like, I mean, for our show here inside a report. And it just, you, Jackie, are the first. We have Jackie oh, Airman saying, and you might know her as Foxface from The Hunger Games. I love the <laughs> name. I, I, I Googled you. Uh, I, 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 saw. <laughs> I saw that you, I, I was really impressed. I mean, I saw you, you know, since six years old and everything. Okay. Yeah. You started, I mean, and everything. And then your movie list and everything like that. Now, most of those independent films, I knew The Hunger Games was a regular studio. Um, yeah, many of them are independent films, but I've done a lot of, um, you know, studio TV shows as well. And okay. so that's that's been an interesting studio experience. I've done a lot of indie films, and then I have a couple more kind of more studio films coming up as well. Right. So. Now, what's... Side of the United States, are you on? Are you? I on? live in Los Angeles. You do live on the West Coast. Then yes. you're, not, you're the LA. All right, I'm Good. LA. All right, mm-hmm. sweet, sweet. Yeah, I used to be stomping grounds. I lived in Palm Springs. So oh, just grab some fun. Cool. I love Palm Springs. Is that yeah. all the time? Now, before I want to cat it to interview you and everything on this, but before I get it to go, I had to ask you a question. Um, as I was saying, I did an independent film here, uh, the Small Town Nutcracker. Yes, which I local heard about ballet. That. Did you hear about that going on? Hey, we go figure. Got like six. T- something awards six plus awards amazing yeah, i think that's great it's so, yeah, cool. It's so and, cool and what i wanted to ask you is which do you find harder or easier uh doing the independent films or doing the studio films which one's more tasking because i'm gonna tell you right, i'm standing out there for 12 hours straight and not even doing a scene sometimes well that happens in studio films too oh, okay yeah. <laughs> they keep you to a bit of a stricter budget right. um i would say that they're both uh different for different reasons a lot of times right. with independent cinema um, you know, the challenges of putting it together and the finances and stuff like that can be, you know, at times insurmountable. Like uh, there's stories of this never happened to me, thank God, but stories of independent films that have their financing and they get there the first day and the financing drops and the film oh. gets canceled. Oh. I I know a couple oh, wow. people who that's even happened to with bigger films. Mm-hmm. Um, but and it's also independent films are definitely like everyone's kind of pulling it up by the bootstrap sometimes. You know, it can be an all hands on deck type of situation. Um but I will say that the beauty of independent films is because of that, there really is such a family and there seems to be a bit more creative license because it really comes down to the filmmakers and the financiers, and the relationship that they have and the control they have over the property. Whereas with studios, there can be a little bit of a, you know, less room for unless you get really lucky, less room for creative leeway because the studios have a really big hand in, um, you know, how a film should go. Uh, that being said, studio films are oftentimes a fair amount more comfortable. Yeah. Uh, you get really nice trailers. You get, yeah. you know, great food. It's uh, <laughs> staying nice places. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so I, I think that the perfect career is kind of a mix of both. Oh, that's hmm. great. That's good. And you did a lot of live acting th- theater too, live theater. Yeah, I've done well. a ton of theater. We yeah. spoke about yeah, that yeah, yesterday. Kat yeah. was talking about that and everything. Yeah, we we both have backgrounds in live theater. Too, oh, that's fantastic. I think like, theater is the the backbone of everything. Yeah, totally different than doing a movie or anything. Very like that. I mean, so. totally different. When you, if you ever do a movie, you know, like I said, yeah, stand around for like, hurry up and wait. That's for sure. Yeah, but I think it's also kind of a challenge and a fun thing in a good way as an actor mm-hmm. because you, you know, with theater, you kind of get this wonderful feeling of being a boulder at the top of a hill, and the second that the show starts, you're just kind of rolling down. In a film, it's like you're rolling down the hill and then it continues to start and stop, and then sometimes you get picked up and placed at a different part on the hill. And mm-hmm. as an actor, it's really fun because you have to have done so much pre work that no matter what happens, no matter where you're starting and stopping, you can just pick right up exactly emotionally where that is. I, I just did a big TV show and um, I was in the middle of a scene where I was crying, and um, and somebody came up to do my makeup touch up in the middle of the scene, and because um, we paused, and uh, they came up and they're like. 
it, it was so sweet. But they were like, oh, my God, I'm such a huge fan of you, all this stuff. And I was like <laughs> in the middle of like a very emotional scene where I'm playing this abused person. Oh, and all this, I've got tears down my face. And I was just like, thanks so much. Thanks so much. You know, like really trying to stay frozen. You're killing I was my like, mood. <laughs> yeah, because I was like, I have to like be able to pick right back yeah, into yeah. it. And then the second it ended, I I went and found her. And I was like, I'm so sorry. I, I really, that was so sweet of you. But I was like in the middle of emotions. <laughs> right. oh, yeah, man. yeah. I need to keep the tears rolling. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Oh, well, that's Absolutely. cool. Well, Kat, you, yeah, we were talking about it. So go ahead. Yeah, no, it, I, 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 I was having too much fun there for a Love, your, <laughs> love your enthusiasm. Yeah, for I, you know, well. hey. Man, hey, you're in town right now specifically because by the time listeners hear this, the event itself will be over, but you're going to be doing a Q&A at the Redwood Theater tonight for the screening of the film Art Thief. Yes. But for people who missed that event, it's going to be playing again at the Wild Rivers Film Festival. So there's going to be plenty of opportunity this summer for people to see it. So since we have you here, uh, why don't you tell people a little bit about what that film is about and why they should come see it? Yeah. So um, it's about one of the most famous art heists in history, which is Uh, the art heist at the Isabella Stewart Gardner Museum, which happened in the 80s. And in this art heist, a Rembrandt and a Vermeer and like 15 other paintings were stolen and their frames were left in the museum, the empty frames. And to this day, the empty frames still hang in the museum, which is so cool. Mm -hmm. But they still have never figured out what happened to the paintings. Netflix did a documentary on it. There's like a bunch of different options, but no one knows what it is. And so Arthur, who's a real artist, he was the writer, director, and producer kind of created this historical fiction about, um, you know, what if there is, you know, this guy, Kevin Dealey, who ended up stealing the pieces and the mob gets entangled. And then I'm kind of uh, I kind of help out with the whole thing as well. Spoiler alert. Uh, but it's it's a really fun take on what could have happened. And this idea that it was maybe actually taken by people that, um, you know, care about the art itself and and less so the value and more about just the beauty of what it means to, you know, it, it, who art belongs to and the question of of um, should art be elitist or should it really belong to everybody? Oh, that's awesome. Oh, yeah. No, right. it's a great film for both art lovers and heist lovers. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. 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 There's something in it for everybody. Well, uh, hey, if you missed that Q&A event with Jacqueline Emerson, you'll have another chance to see this film at the Wild Rivers Film Festival which is going to be running from August 15th through 18th in Brookings this year. Jacqueline, thank you so much for joining oh, thank us. Thank you. Oh, thank you guys for having me. And, yeah. uh, I hope everyone enjoys the movie. I'm excited to hear what you think. You can catch the interview you did with her on the podcast, right? Yes, yep. Yeah, and then there's another full interview with Jacqueline Emerson, a long-form one on Wild Rivers Film Radio. So that will be coming up in a few weeks here. Well, thank you so much. It's time to close out this week's show. Before we go, I'd like to give a shout out to our fearless producers, Ray and Tom, for all their great work making us look and sound good on the radio. And I want to thank you all for tuning into this week's Insider Report. And please make sure to tune in on a daily basis to KCIW 100.7 FM and listen to all the fine shows that they have to offer. You can catch all the fantastic show podcasts as well, including the Insider Report at KCIW.org. And while you're there, check out the live streaming as well. Hey, until next week, this is the Cousin Bruce Ellis. And I'm Kat Liddell. We are signing off. Hey, please support local businesses. Keep it real and spread the love and the peace every chance you get. And hey, we'll, we'll see, see you out there. there. Bam. Bam. Awesome. I love that you guys do this. Like 10 years ever since this station's been going on. Music credits for the preceding show go to kciw.org slash credits.